Hi everyone, so today we're going to be looking at probability and we're going to be going through a um, specific set of questions where you have probabilities that have events that are dependent on each other. So there's no new method to show you for this question. It's the same method that we'd answer for any probability question, but um, you will see how we adapt it slightly to meet the needs of this, these, these types of questions. So um, there is a bag filled with four blue and red marbles. A marble is taken at random from the bag, the colour is noted, and then it is not replaced. Another marble is taken at random. What is the probability of getting two blues? So the specific element of this question we're going to be looking at today is this statement. This idea that you're doing something which is going to alter what your next experiment looks like. So the fact that you are going to be taking a marble out of the bag and then repeating the experiment without pushing that marble back in will alter the probabilities in your second experiment. So let me show you this visually with how we set out our problems. So if you remember any probability um, question, we always write out like this. We state, what is the event? What are the possible outcomes? And then we do our maths part, which is what are the probabilities? So in this question, we have the first event is to pick a marble. And the different outcomes that you could get are blue and red. So you could get a blue marble or a red marble. And in your first pick, it should be pretty obvious that the probability of getting a blue one is four out of a possible eight marbles and red is four out of a possible eight marbles. It's a fair test. You're just as likely to get a blue as you are a red. Now you then repeat the experiment. So we have another um, event outcome and probability set up here, EOP if you want to do it nice and quick. So your event is the same, you're still going to pick a marble and the outcomes are the same, you could still get a blue or a red. However, when you come to your probability, you can't write anything here because the probability is going to change depending on what happens in this experiment. So when I set up this problem, I actually leave that math bit um, bit separate and blank because through a tree diagram is going to be the only way you can actually calculate these probabilities. So let's now draw our tree diagram. So remember there are two events in this um, experiment so that means that I'm going to draw myself two columns here and here and in each event there are two outcomes one two one two so that means in this event there are two branches which are blue and red and in the second event, there are two outcomes, blue, red, blue, red. And for the first event, I can just drop my probabilities in there. So I can just write this as four over eight, and I can write this as four over eight. However, when I go to my second event, it depends on what's happened in the first event in terms of how I then calculate probability. And the easiest way is to is to actually show you what this looks like as a problem. So if I just make this a bit smaller and bring this up here, um, I'm going to draw my actual bag. So here's my bag of marbles. And in my bag of marbles, we know that there are one, two, three, four blue marbles. And there are one, two, three, four red marbles. Now, in the first experiment, so if I go down my first branch, what happens first in my experiment? Well, at the start, I'm standing here, and then when I travel down this branch, what do I know has happened? I've picked out a blue. So blue, this guy here, gets taken out of the bag. He's over here. He gets taken out of the bag and he doesn't get put back in. So actually now when I'm standing here, about to start experiment two, event two, I now have a different bag to pick from. I have this bag where one of the blues is missing. So in total, there are only seven marbles and out of those seven marbles, only three are blue. So this probability here would have to be three out of a possible seven, and the red would be four out of a possible seven. Now that is different to what happens when I travel down here, because when I travel down here in the first experiment and pick out a red, my bag is actually going to look like this. So here's the bag for the second experiment. You start with one, two, three, four blue, one, two, three, four red, and for this experiment, so for this one, that represents this and this represents that one. What happens in this one? Well, it's not a 
blue that gets taken out is this guy here, this red. So the red gets taken out, which means that when I repeat that second experiment, the chances of getting a blue haven't changed. They're still four out of seven, but red has now changed and become three out of seven. So what this is demonstrating is the probability of getting a red in the second event is not the same. It is dependent on what has happened before, because you're not putting that ball back in the bag or that marble back in the bag. So if you pick out a blue, the chances of getting a red is four out of seven. If you pick out a red, the chances of then getting another red um, or that second ball being red is three out of seven. So that's how my tree diagram is slightly changed for this, for this type of question. And now we go ahead and finish the question. It says, what's the probability of getting two blues? Well, that's down to a normal question. Again, we go down each branch, tick and cross whether it meets your criteria. So blue, blue gets a tick, blue, red gets a cross, red, blue gets a cross, and red, red gets a cross. There's only one branch that meets your criteria. So we say the probability of two blues we multiply as we go down is four over eight times three out of seven. So I get 12 over 56 as my answer. OK, right now one for you to try. So very similar problem. You've got there is a bag filled with two blue and three red marbles. A marble is taken at random from the bag. The colour is noted and it is not replaced. Another marble is taken at random. What is the probability of getting two blues? So if we set it up like normal, we've got a vent outcome probability and you've got a second event outcome probability so the first thing you're going to do is pick a marble and hopefully again you can see that you've got the options of red and blue with the probability two out of five and three out of five remember these must always add up to give one now in your second experiment same um, experiment you're going to pick another marble but um, now Although you have the same outcomes, red and blue, you put a cross here and here because you know that those probabilities are going to be dependent, are going to change based on what happens in the first experiment. So if I set up your columns, there are two events, so there are two columns. I would like you to pause the video now and have a go at finishing off this problem. OK, welcome back. So hopefully you've got a tree diagram that you can now check your answers against. We should have two branches um, for blue and red and then another two branches for blue than red and then blue than red. And here you can just drop the probabilities in. Let me get them the right way around. So um, I did red than blue. So this should be um, three over five. And two over five. And now this second branch is where we need to really have a think about it because um, it's dependent on what's happened before. So when I'm standing here, what's already happened in my journey? What's already happened in my experiment? Well, I've taken a blue out. So because I've taken a blue out, um, hopefully you recognize that this is now going to be out of four. And the number of blues has also decreased. So it was three, but now it would have to be two. The number of reds haven't changed. The number of reds stay as two, so that becomes two out of four and two out of four. But if I'm standing here, well, I'm about to take my second experiment. What's happened in my um, journey? Well, I've only taken one red out. So again, the fractions are going to be out of four. So this is over four and this is over four. But the number of blues haven't changed. So this stays as three over four and the number of reds become one over four. So hopefully you've got that right and that's made a lot of sense. So when you actually come to answer your problem, it's the same again. What's the probability of getting two blues? That meets your criteria. No, no, and no. So when you're actually working it out, remember when you go down the branches, we multiply. So we finish this question off by saying, okay, the probability of two blues is going to be equal to three over five times two over four. So we get six over 20 as a final answer. OK, one more. And I would like you to have a go at doing this question completely by yourself. So again, it's a similar question. It's all about that drawing of the tree diagram. That's what I care about. 
You've got a bag filled with six blue and two red marbles. A marble is taken at random from the bag. The colour is noted. Then it is not replaced. So that's your key statement that you've got dependent events. One thing depending on the other. Another marble is taken at random. What is the probability of getting two blues? So pause the video now and press play when you want to go through the answer. OK, so let's have a look at the answer. So again, we're going to set it up event, outcome and probability. And you've also got another event here, outcome and your probability. So your event, as we've done before, is to pick a marble. And your options here are blue and red. And the probabilities, hopefully you can see nice and easy, should be six over eight and two out of eight. Now on this side, your event is to pick another marble. And your outcomes are the same again. You can get blue and red, but you cannot state a stable probability here because they are going to depend on what happens in your first experiment. So you've got your two columns. And each one has two outcomes. So I've got blue and red and then I've got the same again, blue and red, blue, and red. And I can drop my probability into the first one. So I've got six over eight and two out of eight. And it's the second branch that you need to have a careful think about. So it depends on what's happened before. So when you're standing here, what do you know has already happened? You know you've taken one blue out. So that should tell you that these are definitely going to have to be out of seven. And because you've taken one blue out, you could automatically put the two there because you know you haven't changed the number of reds. The number of reds has not been affected. So that must be a two. But the number of blues, you've taken one blue out here. So if you started with six, that means you only have five left. So five out of seven goes here. And very similar story when you're standing here. So you're at this point here, you're about to pick your second ball. You had eight to start with. But if you've already taken one out, this is also out of seven, out of seven. When you're standing here, what's the one thing that's happened? Well, the one thing that ha has happened is that you've taken a red out. So the number of reds should decrease by one. So that becomes one out of seven. But the number of blues hasn't changed at all. So that is your correct tree diagram. And if you've got the correct tree diagram, everything else is uh, very simple. You want to find the probability of getting two blues. We've done this a few times now. It's only the first one that's picked. So final answer, the probability two blues is six over eight times five over seven. So we get 30 over 56. Now, let's have a look at some different problems. So it's the same method, but I'm just gonna begin to look at the different types of questions you could get. So um, having a look at this one, there is a bag filled with three blue and four marbles. A marble is taken at random from the bag, the color is noted, and then it is not replaced. So there's your key statement, um, not replaced. Another marble is taken at random. What's the probability of it getting exactly one red? So again, you should now be really confident at drawing these tree diagrams and answering this problem. So pause your video and press play when you want to have a look at the answer. OK, so if we're having a look at how we're setting this up, very similar. We've got event, outcome and probability. And your first event is pick a marble. Again, you've got blue and red. And for the first experiment, you know that this is going to be three out of seven and four out of seven. And then your second event is to pick another marble. The outcomes again, you could get a blue, you could get a red. And the probabilities you can't calculate because they are dependent on what's happened here because you're not replacing the ball. Now, that means that I've got two columns and two branches in those columns where you could have blue and red, blue and red, blue and red. And the first probabilities you can drop in nice and easy. The second probabilities, hopefully you can recognize they're gonna be out of six. And then what's happened when you've stood here? Well, when I stand here, I've only taken one marble out and that marble has been blue. So if I started with three blues, I now have two blues and the number of reds are not going to change. So this stays as a four. And same again, when I stand here, what's happened? Well, I've only taken out one marble. So these should be out of six and out of six. And what's actually happened? Well, I've taken a red marble out 
which means the number of reds have decreased to three and the number of blues haven't changed. So that's what your tree diagrams would look like. And then we actually tick and cross based on the criteria of the question. So the question says, what's the probability of getting exactly one red? So this first one gets crossed. The reason is when you're standing here, the only thing you've done is pulled out a blue and a blue. So it doesn't meet your criteria. This one does get ticked because when you're standing here, well, what's happened? You've picked out a red and a blue. So that's exactly one. Here gets a tick, red, blue, and here gets a cross because although you've picked out one red, you've actually picked out two. And the question says exactly one red. So if you're going to finish this question off, let me make this nice and small up here. You're going to have to multiply down your branches. So when I multiply down your branches, this becomes three over seven times four over six. So I get 12 over 42. And this one here becomes four over seven times three over six. So again, 12 over 42. And remember, when you collect together branches, all you have to do is add them. So 12 over 42, add 12 over 42, same denominator. You're so happy they've got the same denominator that you make your answer with the same denominator. And the top number here, 24. So final answer, 24 out of 42. Now, we do need to be able to do this in a different context. So have a look at this question here. It says Steve has 10 biscuits in a, ten, in a tin. There are two digestives and eight chocolate biscuits. Steve takes two biscuits at random from the tin. Work out the probability he chooses two different types of biscuits. Now, this is a case where it's not obvious that this is a dependent event. And you have to think about it. You have to really think about the fact that they're going to be dependent on each other. So when you set this problem up, oh, did that again. When you set this problem up, you have event, outcome, and probability. And here you have the same event, outcome, and there's your probability. So your event is to pick a biscuit. You could get a digestive or a chocolate, so I'll put D, O, or choc. And the probability to start with, well, there are two digestives out of potential 10 and eight chocolate out of potential 10. Um, and the same for event two. Event two, you are still picking a biscuit because that's the second biscuit. The outcome is digestive or choc. And the probabilities you don't know because they are dependent on what happens first. And this is a key bit of understanding that you've really got to think about. If you pick two things out at exactly the same time, then it is actually impossible to pick them out at exactly the same time. One will be picked before the other, even if you pick them in the same go. So even if you put your hand in the biscuit tin, you pick one, then you pick another, so you pull out two, that you can never pick them at exactly the same time. So you will, by nature, by, by as a result, you are picking one biscuit, and then when you pick that second biscuit, the choices that you have are altered because you already have one biscuit in your hand. So this is an example of where you have dependent event, but it's they don't state that it's dependent. You just have to remember that if they're telling you they're picking two things at the same time, so this statement here, Steve takes two biscuits at random. Because you, they're saying they're taking it at the same time, that means one, that second biscuit will be slightly um, picked up slightly after the other, so it will be dependent on it. So we don't know what that second biscuit is. The other way of thinking about it is because they haven't told us that they're put, putting the biscuit back, that means we assume that they're not. So that it's happening at the same time. So one happens just before the other. So here you would have a D for digestive and a C for chocolate. D for digestive, C for chocolate, D for digestive, C for chocolate. And our probabilities for the first one are nice and easy. That's two out of 10 and eight out of 10. Now the second branch is where we need to have a little bit of thought. If you're feeling confident, if you get this, I want you to pause and have a go at doing it yourself. If you want to see one more example, you can watch now. Okay, so this second event. So when I'm standing here, only one event has taken place. I've only taken out one digestive and my choices are now um, dependent on the fact that I've taken that digestive out. So because I know I've taken one digestive out, these will both be out of nine. And because I know I've taken one digestive out, that means there's only one digestive left to pick in. So the probability of getting a digestive is one and the probability of getting a chocolate hasn't changed. There are still eight left in the tin. 
if I go down here, well, what's happened to me here? The only thing I've done is travel down this branch. The only thing I've done is pick a chocolate out. So the number of digesters haven't changed. There's still two out of a potential nine. And the number of chocolates have changed. That should become seven out of a potential nine. So that's what our tree diagram should be looking like. And now let's answer the question. The question says, work out the probability of choosing two different types of biscuit. So here gets a cross. And the reason I'm putting across here is because this is stating I've got digestive, digestive. Here gets a tick because this is saying digestive chocolate, so one of each. Here gets a tick because that's saying chocolate digestive, one of each. And this last one, chocolate, chocolate, gets a cross because I'm not doing one of each. So let's just make this a bit smaller and bang this up here so I can actually be working out. So this first font should be 2 out of 10 times 8 out of 9. And this one should be 8 out of 10 times 2 out of 9. So we get here 16 out of 90 and here 16 out of 90. And then to finish this problem off, you've got two probabilities that could both be true. So you add them together. So you get 16 over 90 and 16 over 90, 32 over 90. And there's your answer. So that's going to help you answer the first set of Hegarty questions. So if you want to go and have a practice yourself, get onto Hegarty and have a go at clips um, 364 and 365. The final clip that we need to do is using a bit of algebra. So we're going to have a look at that now and it's going to help us answer that final Hecate clip for this week. So this question says there are 12 sweets in a box. There are N jelly beans and the rest are cola bottles. Colin takes two sweets out of the box at random. Write an expression for getting two jelly beans. So it's algebra, but that means we don't change our method. This is the reason we have this method. The reason we have strong methods is that when we get complex questions, we can hang on to those methods and, and, and get the answer right. So I set it up just like normal event outcome probability. And over here, event outcome probability. So my event is pick a sweet. And my outcomes are I could get a jelly bean, so jelly bean, or I could get a cola, cola bottle. And the probability of getting a jelly bean will N out of a potential 12 sweets. So there are N that are jelly beans out of potential 12. This one I don't know. It doesn't tell me anything about the number of cola bottles. It just tells me the rest are cola bottles. So if I know that this has to add up to 1, then actually what I know is this top has to add up to 12. So I get 12 over 12. And the other way of thinking about it is there are 12 sweets altogether and N of them are jelly beans. So I've got 12 altogether and the ones that I don't want are the jelly beans. So 12 minus all the jelly beans will give me all the cola bottles. So 12 minus anything that's a jelly bean, so N, N jelly beans will give me all the cola bottles. So there's my expression, N over 12. And then for cola bottles, 12 minus N over 12, so the number of things that aren't jelly beans. Now, your second event is, again, you're going to pick a sweet. And your options are, again, jelly bean or cola bottle. And the probabilities, well, just like we said before, the probabilities you can't work out. Because all it says is, Colin takes two sweets out of the box at random. And that um, should trigger for you the last question we looked at with the biscuits. It's impossible to take two sweets at exactly the same time. So one sweet will be picked out just slightly before the other, which means that when you take that second sweet out, it is being impacted by whatever you've already got in your hand. So these, um, this event here is dependent on what happens here. Now, I should have two columns because there's two events. And each of those events, there's two outcomes. So I should have jelly bean here and cola, and then another two, jelly bean, cola, jelly bean and cola. And this one, I can just plonk this in, n over 12, and 12 minus n over 12. And then it's time to have a think about that second expression. So again, remember when I'm standing here, what's happened? When I stand here, the one thing I know is that I've taken out a jelly bean. 
So if I've taken out a jelly bean, that means the number of sweets left should be out of 11 and should be out of 11. And if I've taken out a jelly bean, well, I started with N jelly beans. And if I've taken out a jelly bean, there's now one less jelly bean. So it was whatever number of jelly beans I had, minus one. The number of cola bottles shouldn't have changed. So this stays as 12 minus N, like that. And then when I stand down here, again, it's going to be out of 11 because you've taken one thing out. But this time you've taken out a cola bottle. So the number of jelly beans stays the same. This stays as N, but the number of cola bottles, I'm going to give myself a bit more space for writing this out. The number of cola bottles now looks like this. It was 12 minus N, and now it's another minus 1. So what you actually get is 11 minus n over 11, because 12 minus 1 is 11. So there's your expression, exactly the same as what we've just been doing with a bit of algebra in it. And the question is, what's the probability of getting two jelly beans? Well, only that one gets ticked. These two, uh, these three across, because you want two jelly beans. So you know what you're looking for. So if I just make this a bit smaller, bring this up here, that means that when you're looking down this branch, an expression is going to have to be n over 12 times n minus 1 over 11. And when you multiply together fractions, you do exactly the same. If you're doing number or algebra, you multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom. So final answer here, n brackets n minus 1 over 132. And there's your expression. Let's try another one just like it to see how well you can demonstrate this. So this says there are six sweets in the box. There are N jelly beans and the rest are cola bottles. Colin takes two sweets out of the box at random, writing an expression for the probability of getting two cola bottles. So same as before, you've got event, outcome, probability, event, outcome, probability. And I want you to have a go. Just um, pause this video and just fill out that table for me, then check it before you do your tree diagram. So pause now to fill out that table. OK, welcome back. So our events should be that you can get. A, um, sorry, our event should be that you are picking a sweet. So what are you actually doing? You're picking a sweet. And your potential outcomes are jelly beans or cola bottles. And then your probabilities really think about this jelly beans. Well, there are N out of six. So there are N jelly beans out of a potential six sweets. And if you want to know how many are cola bottles, we'll take the total number of sweets altogether minus the ones that are not cola bottles. And you know that N are jelly beans. So six minus the number of jelly beans will give me the number of cola bottles. So six minus N over six. On this side, your second event is exactly the same. You're picking a sweet. You've got jelly beans and cola bottles. And the probabilities you can't work out because you are taking two sweets out of the box at random. So it may seem like you're taking them at exactly the same time, but you're not. One we picked slightly before the other, which means that when you pick that second sweet, the choice you have is different depending on what you have in your hand from the first sweet. So we can't find the probabilities here. You have to fill it in a tree diagram. So again, I've given you the columns there and I'm going to give you there are two outcomes for each one because I think everyone's pretty confident. Right now we've got jelly beans and cola bottles, jelly beans and cola bottles, jelly beans and cola bottles. And I would like you to have a go at filling in the probabilities for each of those branches. So press pause now and press play when you're ready to check your answers. OK, welcome back. So let's have a look. The probability of getting a jelly bean should be N over 6. And the probability of getting a cola bottle in the first pick is 6 minus N over 6. Now comes the interesting bit. So if I'm standing here, what has happened? Well, when I stand here, the only thing that I've got on my hand is one jelly bean. So the number of sweets in my tin have now changed and should be out of five. So this is out of five and this is out of five. Now, the only thing that I've picked when I stand here, is I've picked a jelly bean. So the cola bottles aren't going to change, but the jelly beans are. So cola bottles stay the same as 6 minus n, but jelly beans become 6 minus 1. Sorry, n minus 1, the number of jelly beans minus 1. 
Okay, same thing here. When I stand here, what's happened? Well, the only thing that I've picked out is a cola bottle. So I've picked out one cola bottle, which means that both of these branches are going to be out of five. So this one's out of five and this one's out of five. And when I look at the probability of getting a jelly bean, well, I haven't picked any jelly beans out yet. So this one stays as N. But this guy, a second cola bottle, is going to have six minus N minus one. So five minus N over five as your answer. Let's have a look at the question now. So the question is asking for two cola bottles. So again, have a pause of the video and try and work this whole question out for yourself to get the final answer and press play when you want to check your answer. OK, so welcome back. So we should have cross, 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 cross. The only thing that fits your criteria of getting two cola bottles is here because you've got cola bottle, cola bottle. And when you multiply these down the line, we should have six minus N over six times five minus n over five. And remember how we do this, we multiply across the top, we multiply across the bottom. So you can put brackets around these guys. Final answer, six minus n multiplied by five minus n over 30. And that's your final answer, you're done, okay? So that's dependent probabilities. A reminder to go and have a practice of your Hegarty. So you've got 364, 365 and 367 as good clips to go and practice. And um, I hope you get on well and I will see you soon. Well done.